Nothing makes you happier when you've just bought a new ultrasound than when you find an artery on the bone. I'll never forget this happening with Miranda. We found an artery on her temple and I'd already treated that area multiple times without any vascular occlusion. That's why I thought I'd do a show specifically on why injection depth makes you safer, even if there's an artery on the bone. So why would injecting deeper be safer? Well, of course, this depends on the anatomy most of all. There are five points on the face where we know arteries tend to be right on the periosteum or emerging through the periosteum, which would be the most dangerous place to inject deeply. These are the foramen. So if you consider where the vessels pass into the face, this would be the worst place to be deep. But if you're not in those places and you're on the periosteum, it's usually safer. The reason for this is because when you are truly on the periosteum, there's only a limited amount of space available for you to even be in a vessel. And vessels themselves tend to be separated slightly from the periosteum, even if it's only by a millimeter or two. And even if it's just by the vessel wall, you could argue there is no vessel that is truly on the periosteum. They sit above it. And the lumen, the bit we're most worried about, is always a small distance away from the periosteum. And this is why we can use a needle, in particular a small needle, I'll explain why in a minute, to be safer. Regardless of whether you have an ultrasound or not, it is a safer way to inject than injecting at intermediate depths. This discussion hinges a lot around the terminology and the resolution of our anatomy. When a sonographer will say there's an artery on the bone, what they mean is, sitting on the surface of the bone, there's a blood vessel, but the lumen itself is not embedded at the same level of the periosteum. If that was the case, then any injection on the periosteum would occlude that vessel. But the lumen is always elevated by the vessel wall and usually by a little bit of fat or something underneath so that there's a little bit of distance between where the lumen is and where our needle tip is actually touching. And this is the crucial factor, which is why a resolution of thinking is important. We do have space to put a needle onto the periosteum that leaves minimal space for the bevel of that needle to be overlapping with the lumen. And that's the bit that makes us safer. The probability of being in a vessel is much lower when you are deep. And there are many things you can do to actually increase that safety, which I'm gonna go through in this video. First thing, this is a 21 gauge needle. So it's much bigger than what we'd normally inject with, but I want you to have a look at how far off the periosteum the lumen of this needle would be. So there's plenty of room here in multiple parts of the face that you could have the needle tip on the periosteum, but the lumen of the needle could actually be in the lumen of a vessel that wasn't on the periosteum. You can also then see why changing the angle of injection would decrease this risk. Because once you're at 45 degrees, you've more than halved the amount of potential risk from injecting. And you could go even steeper than this, even around 30 degrees, you've got almost no space now left, even with a very big needle. So this is just a simple point illustrating how the angle of injection changes the area of risk when you're using a periosteal injection to decrease the risk of vascular occlusion. The next thing to consider would be the different size needles. So here is a 22 gauge needle next to a 32 gauge needle. And look at the huge difference in the potential risk with that larger needle in terms of the space that you're likely to cover. And look at the huge difference in how far off the top of the lumen in the needle is from the periosteum. So this would be a much higher risk periosteal injection with a larger needle than a small needle. But then of course you can also change that risk as we discussed by changing the angle. So let's have a look at this in practice. If I'm using a large needle and I try and go through to the periosteum at 90 degrees, there's so much of the lumen of the vessel overlapping with the lumen of the needle that this will just be a straightforward vascular occlusion. Even if my needle tip is actually protruding out the other side. If I do an angled entry with the bevel facing down, you can see some of the product is now underneath the vessel and some is still within. So that is at least a smaller vascular occlusion because of the overlap of the bevel and the periosteum is still there. Now let's try a much smaller needle. So this has actually gone straight through and is underneath the vessel and is not occluding the vessel despite being in the middle of it. So this is a very sharp needle. I haven't touched anything else yet and watch how easily it passes through the vessel wall. 
and you can imagine that happening on the other side as well. If I was at 45 degrees, I should be able to get all the way through. So bevel facing down with a sharp needle. So all, I'm, I'm all the way through and it's easier there for the, for the filler to then emerge underneath the vessel, which is safer. If I then do exactly the same thing with a blunted needle. So if I take this needle and I ruin the tip as might happen when you are using the periosteal style injections, look how much force it now takes to get through this vessel. In fact, what you should see is it just compresses, compresses, compresses. This is why you have danger because it may just pop through the first wall, but it's definitely not going to pop through the second wall. And then my injection is straight into the lumen. So this is why blunt needles are dangerous when you're using periosteal injections. But wouldn't a blunt needle be less dangerous because then you have less chance of actually getting into the vessel in the first place? Not because you're using the... It's a good question. We should probably include that show. So you're using the periosteum as your depth guide. And the reason why blunt is more dangerous is because when you use a blunt needle, then your depth, when you reach the end of your, of your ability to penetrate, you tend to be... Um, not on the periosteum and it's the not on the periosteum bit that makes it more risky so yes you're right you might still be on the outside of the vessel but you're definitely more risky than if you were definitely on the periosteum that's that's the theory anyway if you'd like a free download with the anatomy of the risky areas in the face make sure you click on the link that comes underneath this video to download that and you can also watch a video on the six deep injection points these are the six areas that you must not use a periosteal level injection, make sure you watch this video here.